Welcome back, my friends, to The Chosen's Blended Harmony of the Gospel. I'm Nancy. This is Mandy. We are on Day 25, Part 2, The Shrewd Manager. The Parable of the Shrewd Manager Now he said to his disciples, There was a rich man who received an accusation that his manager was squandering his possessions. So he called the manager in and asked, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you can no longer be my manager. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I'm removed from management, people will welcome me into their homes. So he summoned each one of the master's debtors. How much do you owe my master? He said to the first one. A hundred measures of olive oil, he said. Take your invoice, he told him. Sit down quickly and write 50. Next, he asked another. How much do you owe? A hundred measures of wheat, he said. Take your invoice, he told them, and write 80. The master praised the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd than the children of light in dealing with their own people. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of worldly wealth, so when it fails, they may welcome you into eternal dwellings. Whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in very much, and whoever is unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. So if you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with what is genuine? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to someone else, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, since he will either hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Danger of Wealth The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, were listening to all these things and scoffing at him. And he told them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly admired by people is revolting in God's sight. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God has been proclaimed, and everyone is urgently invited to enter in. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter in the law to drop out. There was a rich man who would dress in purple and fine linen, feasting lavishly every day. But a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, was lying at his gate. He longed to be filled with what fell from the rich man's table, but instead the dogs would come and lick his sores. One day the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus at his side. Father Abraham, he called out, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this flame. Son, Abraham said, remember that during your life you received good things just as Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here while you are in agony. Besides all this, a great chasm has been fixed between us and you, so that those who want to pass over from here to you cannot, neither can those from there cross over to us. Father, he said, then I beg you to send him to my father's house, because I have five brothers, to warn them so that they won't also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. But he told them, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Okay, let's go back first and look at the shrewd manager. So this guy is about to be fired and he's wondering what he's going to do. He's not strong enough to dig. He's ashamed to beg. And he says, I know what I'll do so that people will welcome me into their homes. So he summons each one of the master's debtors and asks how much they owe. A hundred measures of olive oil. He says, quickly make it 50. Someone else, how much do you owe? A hundred measures of wheat, make it 80. And so I remember as a kid thinking, this guy's like cheating, like this shouldn't be a good thing, right? But look what happens. The master praised the unrighteous manager because he'd acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd than the children of light in dealing with their own people. And Jesus goes on to say, whoever is faithful in very little is faithful in much. And whoever is unrighteous in very little will be unrighteous in much. So Jesus says, So if you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with what is genuine? If you have not been faithful with what belongs to someone else, who will give you what is your own? 
So he's saying, if you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in big things, right? And then I love this next line. No servant can serve two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And that two masters thing is really good for us today because we are serving the world. I mean, we really are. I mean, we're all addicted to our phones and we're trying to, you know, get higher up with our jobs and just go for money and things. You can't really serve God and the world. You have to decide what you're going to do. And when you serve God, then you just use your money differently. Like I've never had a very fancy house or hardly ever a new car. Just live simply, right? Because then I can use that money to be helping other people because I want to be serving God. So think about that. What are you doing with your time and what are you doing with your money? Those are your two biggest resources. Are you using them for yourself to get yourself ahead in life or are you just trying to use that to serve God and help other people? So remember that today that you can't have two masters. You're either serving God or you're serving the world. It's up to you which one. Then Jesus also told them another story because they were trying to be justifying themselves in the sight of others, but God knows their heart, he says, for what is highly admired by people is revolting in God's sight. So he tells a story about a rich man who would feast every day and a poor man named Lazarus. Now this is not the Lazarus who was resurrected from the dead, different man, Lazarus, who was covered with sores and was lying at the gate and he longed to be filled with what fell from the rich man's table. Isn't that sad? He's not looking for big food. He would just be happy with the crumbs, right? But instead, the dogs come and lick his sores. That's kind of gross. But one day, the poor man died and was carried away. The rich man also died and was buried. But he was in torment in Hades. And he looked up and he saw Abraham a long way off and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to come and dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony. Can you imagine me that hot and that much agony that someone who was poor and dirty dip their finger on your tongue would be a good thing? That's agony. But my friends, that's what hell is going to be like. So please believe in Jesus so you don't go to hell and be burning like this guy was. So Abraham says, son, remember during your life, you received good things just like Lazarus had bad things. And now he's comforted here while you're in agony. So the tables have turned, right? Besides all this, a great chasm has been fixed between us and we can no longer cross back and forth. That chasm is the chasm between heaven and hell and you can't go back and forth. Some people, you know, talk about purgatory maybe or praying somebody out. You can't. When you die, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And there's a great chasm that's in between. And then he says, Father, I beg you to send someone to my father's house because I have five brothers. So now he's worried about his brothers going to hell also. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them saying that they've got, you know, the Bible. And he says, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes back, they will repent. So this rich man is saying, if you send that poor Lazarus, that man who's been begging in the streets, but now is in heaven, if you would send him back, that that they would listen. But he's saying, no, they're not going to listen. If they're not listening now, they're not going to listen. And so I hope today that you learn from this story that there is going to be an end to either your life or an end of the whole world at some point, and that there is only two choices, heaven and hell. And so I hope that you have chosen Jesus as your Savior so that you can go to heaven, because that's what all these videos are about, just telling you about Jesus and his love and God's love for you. And all you have to do is believe. You just have to do A, B, C. A, admit that you're a sinner. Tell God, I'm sorry, God, I have messed up. And then B, believe that Jesus is God's son. And then C, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you do that, you can be saved and you won't be like this rich man just dying and burning and having to be so hot that you want someone to come and touch your tongue. You'll be with that poor man, Lazarus, who believed in God and now is in heaven. The choice is yours. So come back tomorrow for more Harmony of the Gospel where you can hear more about God's love for you. Have a great day, my friends, and we'll see you tomorrow. You can get your own copy of A Blended Harmony of the Gospels by The Chosen simply by going to thechosengifts.com. There you can find all kinds of wonderful merchandise to help build your faith this year. Be sure to check out their devotionals and their Bible studies. Have a blessed day.